Very good evening. I am Shilpa and I welcome you all to the NCERT live phone in program. Today our topic of discussion is important uh, importance of uh, sorry importance of students activities for the promotion of life skills. And to, and to discuss this topic in our studio we have Professor Saroj Yadav who is Dean Academic at no, NCERT and also we have Dr. Bijay Kumar Malik who is an assistant professor at Department of Education and Social Sciences in NCERT. I welcome both of you in our today's program. Thank you. So, let us proceed to understand our today's topic of discussion. Ma'am, baat, baat ho rahi hai students activities ki, life skills ki. So, sab se pehle aap hume batai ki adolescents ke kya issues and concerns hai aur hume kyon adolescent education ke baare mein discuss karna mahatwa poon hai. Adolescents ko hum hindi mein kishor avastha kehte hain. और एडोलेसेंस पीरियड हमारे जिंदगी का या हर एक की जिंदगी का एक अहम समय होता है जिसमें बहुत सारे परिवर्तन होते हैं और ये परिवर्तन एक तरह से शारीरिक भी होते हैं मानसिक भी होते हैं भावनात्मक भी होते हैं और इन परिवर्तन के दौरान जो परिवर्तन जो चेंजेस आती हैं वो हमारे किशोरों को कभी-कभी ठीक ढंग से रास्ता नहीं दिखाती हैं तो ये जरूरी है कि किशोर अवस्था शिक्षा में जो शारीरिक परिवर्तन होते हैं जैसे कि हाइट का बढ़ना वेट का बढ़ना लड़कियों में मेंस्ट्रुएशन आना लड़कों की वॉइस का चेंज होना तो ये बहुत सारे ऐसे परिवर्तन है जिसमें कि हमें किशोर अवस्था शिक्षा की जरूरत पड़ती है किशोर अवस्था शिक्षा में केवल हम किशोरों को ही जागृत नहीं करते हैं बल्कि हम चाहते हैं कि जितने भी टारगेट ग्रुप हैं चाहे वो पेरेंट्स हैं चाहे वो टीचर्स हैं चाहे वो अध्यापक एक तरह से जिनको हम कहते हैं अध्यापक हैं या पीयर्स हैं जो फ्रेंड्स हैं उन सभी को शिक्षा देना बहुत आवश्यक है क्योंकि हम एक दूसरे की मदद करते हैं भावनात्मक परिवर्तन में क्या है कि बच्चे बहुत जल्दी जैसे उनका मूड स्विंग बहुत होता है कभी हंस देते हैं कभी बहुत शीघ्रता से रोने लग जाते हैं गुस्सा बहुत आता है एंजाइटी बहुत होती है स्ट्रेस बहुत होता है तो इन सब को भी डील करने के लिए उनको किसी ना किसी तरीके से आवश्यकता है कि वो इसके बारे में अवेयर हो और जीवन कौशल का विकास कर सके एक अगर आप पीपीटी अगर दिखाएं प्रेजेंटेशन तो इसमें देखिएगा कि किस तरीके से जरूरत क्यों है क्योंकि हमारे यहां जो सफर करते हैं मेंटल हेल्थ 14% बच्चे मेंटल हेल्थ से सफर करते हैं डिसऑर्डर है 54% गर्ल्स हमारी एनीमिक है कि एनीमिया बहुत ज्यादा है 8 से 12% बच्चे टबाको यूज करते हैं 16% बच्चों में किसी ना किसी तरीके का वायलेंस उन्होंने अपनी जिंदगी में सहन किया है या आ, सफर किया है आज हम कहते हैं कि हमारे लीगल एज ऑफ मैरिज जो है वो 18 फॉर गर्ल्स है 21 फॉर बॉयज है लेकिन फिर भी 27% लड़कियां आज भी बिफोर 18 उनकी शादी हो जाती है और 30% ऐसे बच्चे हैं जिनको की कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव नॉलेज नहीं है तो ये जो अवस्था है ये जो स्थितियां हैं इन सब को ध्यान में रखते हुए लगता है कि किशोर अवस्था के बारे में उनके जो बदलाव होते हैं उनके बारे में जागृत करना बहुत जरूरी है और यह अवस्था एक तरह से बचपन और अडल्टहुड के बीच है यानी चाइल्डहुड एंड अडल्टहुड के बीच की अवस्था है जिसमें परिवर्तन बहुत तीव्र गति से होते हैं और कभी-कभी क्या होता है कि बच्चों में फिजिकल डेवलपमेंट तेज होता है मानसिक जो बदलाव है वो उतना तेज नहीं होता किसी में मानसिक बदलाव बहुत शीघ्रता से होता है और फिजिकल ग्रोथ उतनी नहीं होती तो ये छोटे-छोटे मुद्दे हैं जो हमें बहुत छोटे लगते हैं लेकिन बच्चों के लिए वो बहुत ही अहम होते हैं इसलिए उनको इस अवस्था में ना केवल जानकारी देना बल्कि उनमें लाइफ स्किल्स का डेवलपमेंट करना भी बहुत जरूरी है बिल्कुल कमेंट टू डॉक्टर विजय मलिक इतने सारे इश्यूज एंड कंसर्न्स है वी हैव लॉट ऑफ इश्यूज एंड कंसर्न्स रिलेटेड टू एडोलसेंट एंड द एजुकेशन इन द सेम सो व्हाट आर द रीसेंट इनिशिएटिव हैज बीन टेकन केयर ऑफ ओके as we have already discussed about the importance and issues of adolescent issues in India. Mm -hmm. As you know, India is the highest adolescent population in the world. As per census 2011, it is 25 crore, near about the 25 crore adolescent population. Mm -hmm. Then why it is important? If 25 crore population we have and this is the highest in the world, if we will give them proper knowledge, health, education, under this project, under this adolescence education program, they will have a life skill. Already Madam told life skill how to tackle various issues. So, 
in that context there are n number of uh, emerging issue concerns related to adolescence. Mm -hmm. However, main major modern issues like suppose social networking nowadays watching TV so social network mental health issue how to cope with stress how to cope with your examination mm -hmm. problem all these things how to healthy relationship between peers and also with parents also teachers with the social atmosphere so these are the recent uh, day to day life they have a some kind of issues related to their mm -hmm. lives so keeping all these issues we have to make them three things first we have not only awareness because information nowadays it is easily available everywhere because now the e world it is digitization is there mm -hmm. internet is there google is there so many mediums right. to know the information but what is the important of school education school education have three important areas to tackle this type of things how to promote life skill among adolescent through adolescence education mm -hmm. like it will give the authentic knowledge as you know India have the mass female literacy and if any 25 crores adolescent out of school and in, our, uh, in school adolescents their mothers are not literate mm -hmm. we cannot say ki everyone's mother because as you know India is also a rural pockets right. and mm -hmm. many adolescents they belong to rural so in that context education through school education we have to give proper knowledge, mm -hmm. authentic information, age appropriate and whatever keeping in the mind of the age of the child, what information they required on these, these issues, adolescent issues, it will be better for them from the school education point of view. These are the importance and beauty of this program, we can say it is a interactive method, mm -hmm. it is a friendly manner, children where in school the the caretaker life suppose I am dealing with adolescence issues and all these things. So, they can easily just reciprocate their feelings what they are bothering since long what is not problem uh, to just uh, their problem they are not easily discuss with the parents you know there is a registration and parents have a high expectation always they have a confrontation teacher uh, examination point of view suppose always you score so many marks and all these things in that context adolescence education program give them authentic knowledge appropriate knowledge, mm -hmm. age appropriate knowledge and all other things. Jee. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, जो सर ने बात की इसी मैं दोबारा दोहराती हूँ recent initiatives के बारे में आप हमें बताएं। जी, uh, initiatives uh, बहुत continuous process है। जी। uh, अगर मैं आपको थोड़ा history में भी ले जाऊँ, तो हमने 1993 में एक seminar किया था, जिस seminar में हमने ये ढूँढा कि इसका नाम क्या दिया जाए, इसको क्या हम family planning कहें, family uh, education कहें, या adolescence education कहें। तो वहाँ पर ये मुद्दा काफी डिबेट हुआ और कहा कि इसको एक तरह से किशोर अवस्था शिक्षा एडोलेशंस एजुकेशन कहा जाए। उसके बाद उस समय हमारा फोकस था सिर्फ नॉलेज पर कि बच्चों में अवेयरनेस जनरेट करें और अवेयरनेस से जैसा कि कहा कि अवेयरनेस अकेले से मदद नहीं मिलती है तो लाइफ स्किल्स पर फोकस recent initiative में फिर ये आया कि बहुत सारे organizations, ministries, programs को implement कर रही है कोई उसको HIV AIDS के नाम से कह रहा है कोई adolescence education के नाम से कह रहा है कोई even uh, sex education के नाम से कह रहा है कोई comprehensive sexuality education कह रहा है तो क्यों ना इन सारे initiatives को harmonize करें और अभी जो recent, recent initiative है उसका नाम है school health programs in India. Okay. So, we have a school health program in the Aishman Bharat. And the Aishman Bharat is a very important flagship program. So, we have a program in the school health we have a school health component. And this component is a component that we have to do school health component. And this is a component that we have to do this component. Because in adolescent investment, we have to do this investment. कि एक तो हम बच्चों का स्वास्थ्य ठीक करेंगे जब बच्चों का स्वास्थ्य ठीक होगा तो उनका एडल्टहुड में भी उनका स्वास्थ्य ठीक होगा और जो नेक्स्ट जनरेशन होगी उसका स्वास्थ्य भी हमारा ठीक हो जाएगा दूसरी बात यह है कि वो कहते हैं कि जितना पैसा आप एडोलेसेंट स्टेज पर एजुकेशन पर लगाएंगे 
तो उसको आपको दस गुना बेनिफिट मिलता है क्योंकि जब बच्चा एजुकेटेड होगा उसके रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी बढ़ेगी वो रिस्पॉन्सिबल सिटीजन होगा इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट बहुत ज्यादा होगा और तीसरा ये कहते हैं कि अगर इन्वेस्ट करते हैं बच्चों के स्कूल गोइंग में तो हमें बारह परसेंट बेनिफिट होता है कि और लॉन्ग टर्म में क्योंकि स्वास्थ्य जब ठीक रहेगा तो हमें स्वास्थ्य पे खर्च करना नहीं पड़ेगा ज्यादा और हमारा इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट होगा तो वो एक बहुत बड़ा एक मुद्दा है और उसके साथ साथ जो हमारे जो एरियाज है इस न्यू इनिशिएटिव में अब हमने ग्यारह एरिया जोड़ दिए पहले हम सिर्फ बात करते थे प्रोसेस ऑफ ग्रोइंग अप की फिर हम बात करते थे ड्रग अब्यूज की सब्सटेंस मिसयूज जिसको कहते हैं और तीसरा जो हमारा था वो था कि एच आई वी एन एड्स अब 11 मुद्दे हो गए हैं और दो मिनिस्ट्री एक साथ मिलकर के काम करेंगी एक मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ ह्यूमन रिसोर्स डेवलपमेंट और दूसरी है मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर तो दोनों मिनिस्ट्री ने कहा कि जो दोनों जिसपे काम करते हैं उनको कम्बाइन कर दिया जाए क्योंकि टीचर्स भी वही है बच्चे भी वही है एंड यू कैन से पेरेंट्स भी वही है तो क्यों ना हम एक साथ काम करें और इसमें अगर आप देखें तो पहला अगर आपका एरिया है तो वो है ग्रोइंग अप हेल्दी okay. यानी सबसे पहले हम किस तरीके से स्वस्थ रहें वो ज्यादा जरूरी है और खासतौर से अगर आपके बच्चे हेल्दी हैं जैसे मैंने कहा तो हमारी तीन जनरेशन एक तरह से हेल्दी हो सकती है दूसरी बात है कि इमोशनल वेलबींग एंड मेंटल हेल्थ जैसे मैंने शुरू में कहा था कि बहुत सारे बच्चे हैं फोर्टीन जो कि किसी ना किसी तरह के मेंटल हेल्थ इशूज से सफर कर रहे हैं और अगर वो डेटा सही है तो सेल्फ हार्म भी एक तरह से इंक्रीज हो रहा है तो इमोशनल स्टेबिलिटी इमोशनल बैलेंस और मेंटल अलर्टनेस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट तो दूसरा मुद्दा हमने वो लिया है तीसरा मुद्दा जेंडर इक्विटी एंड इक्वालिटी है हालांकि हमारी 1986 पॉलिसी ने भी इस पर बहुत तवज्जो दिया है और वो वन ऑफ द कोर एरिया है लेकिन फिर भी अभी तक हम पूरी तरह से उसको अचीव नहीं कर पाए तो बच्चों में किस तरीके से क्योंकि वॉयलेंस जब बढ़ रहा है जब हम कहते हैं कि अभी भी 16 परसेंट बच्चे किसी ना किसी तरीके का एक्सपीरियंस फेस कर रहे हैं तो इसका मतलब अभी हमारे यहाँ इक्वालिटी नहीं है नहीं। और एक जेंड जो वायलेंस है वो सिर्फ लड़कियों में नहीं है लड़कों के प्रति भी है और चौथा है इंटरपर्सनल रिलेशनशिप कि हम दूर बैठ के तो बात कर सकते हैं लेकिन पड़ोस में कौन बैठा हुआ है बच्चे आपस में एक दूसरे से कैसे बात करें वो सोशल हेल्थ जो समाज का है वो उस पर निर्भर करता है न्यूट्रिशन हेल्थ एंड सैनिटेशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एरिया प्रमोशन एंड मैनेजमेंट ऑफ सब्सटेंस मिस यूज अभी रिसेंटली एम्स ने एक स्टडी की है और उसमें पाया गया है कि टबैको यूज ऑफ टबैको गांजा और बहुत सारे जो हमारे सब्सटेंस हैं उनका बढ़ रहा है अब यूज वो मतलब मिस यूज हो रहा है और सबसे खतरनाक बात यह है कि हमारे यंग चिल्ड्रन बच्चे उन सब्सटेंस अब के शिकार हो रहे हैं फिर हेल्दी लाइफ स्टाइल इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एम जो हमारे नॉन कम्युनिकेबल डिजीजेस कभी सुना नहीं था कि यंग पॉपुलेशन में हार्ट अटैक हो गया है या कोई और बीमारी आ गई है डायबिटिक हो गए हैं तो ये सारी चीजें भी जरूरी है कि फिजिकल एक्टिविटीज पर योग पर थोड़ा और अधिक बल दिया जाए और रिप्रोडक्टिव हेल्थ एंड एचआईवी प्रिवेंशन आल्सो हमारा एक एरिया सेफ्टी एंड सिक्योरिटी एंड वॉयलेंस अगेंस्ट वीमेन एंड चिल्ड्रन इज वैल्यूज एंड सिटीजनशिप और जैसा कि अभी डॉक्टर मलिक ने कहा कि यूज ऑफ प्रॉपर यूज ऑफ मीडिया सो ये हमारे एक रिसेंट इनिशिएटिव है कि जो बच्चों के प्रति ये एक ऐसे मुद्दे हैं जो बच्चों को एक तरह से घेरे भी रखते हैं कभी कभी वो इसको शिकार हो जाते हैं क्योंकि कल ही के पेपर में था कि बहुत बच्चे इंटरनेट का काफी लंबे समय तक उसका यूज करते हैं उससे उनको फिजिकल डिफॉर्मिटीज हैं पॉस्चरल डिफेक्ट्स हैं और उनकी कंसेंट्रेशन पावर भी जो है शिक्षा में नहीं आ पाती तो ये सारे हमारे एक रिसेंट इनिशियेटिव है जिसको अभी हम आगे बढ़ाना चाहते हैं Uh, यहाँ पे मैं एक प्रश्न लेना चाहूंगी अंशुल जी का प्रश्न है उनका प्रश्न ये है कि क्यों हम फोकस करते हैं एडोलसेंट एजुकेशन पर क्यों ना हम इसको प्री प्राइमरी और प्राइमरी लेवल पर भी डिस्कस करें ये आ, असल में तो वैसे तो ये किशोर मंच है तो किशोर मंच पर हम किशोरों की बात ज्यादा करते हैं लेकिन बिल्कुल आपने सही कहा क्योंकि बुराई को अगर जड़ से उखाड़ना है तो उसको शुरू से ही करना चाहिए और ये ऑलरेडी हमने जो हमारा स्कूल करिकुलम है फॉर हेल्थ एजुकेशन उस पर हमने फोकस किया है और हमने जो फ्रेमवर्क बनाया है उसको हमने प्री प्राइमरी से लेकर के हायर सेकेंडरी स्टेज तक बनाया है अभी हमने ट्रेनिंग मटेरियल सिर्फ हमने आप कह सकते हैं कि हायर सेकेंडरी का बनाया जैसे कि दिखाया जा रहा है लेकिन हम जल्दी ही प्री प्राइमरी और प्राइमरी के लिए भी एक तरह से बुकलेट बनाने जा रहे हैं जो इवन बच्चों की एक्टिविटी से आधारित भी एक किताब बनाने जा रहे हैं जो बच्चे उसको स्वयं भी यूज कर सकते हैं और उस तरह की एक्टिविटी हम चाहेंगे कि अध्यापक भी उसमें आवश्यक करें जी 
अब जैसे कि ये सर आपने मेंशन किया था पीयर प्रेशर तो ऐसी कुछ और सिचुएशंस आती हैं लाइफ में हम लाइफ स्किल्स की बात कर रहे हैं तो बेसिक स्किल्स कौन से हो सकते हैं इन और सिचुएशंस में यस पीयर प्रेशर इट इज वन टाइप ऑफ योर प्रॉब्लम्स अमंग पीयर्स वेयर सपोज लेट एन एग्जांपल बेसिकली दिस इज अ वेरी कॉमन इन क्लासरूम Nowadays, the uh, situation or modern life and uh, various uh, lifestyle have, suppose we can uh, take an example, mm -hmm. how to say no drugs, some friend offer any occasion, maybe in the uh, social ceremony, maybe in the cocktail party, maybe in the annual function, maybe in the any isolation. So, in that context, peer pressure is the very very violent how to just motivate any friends mm -hmm. those are not interested but at the same time the friend is not uh, the skill he or she has no skill how to say no i don't want to lose my friend at the same time i have no skill how to tackle that situation this is one type of peer pressure peer pressure may be in drug abuse mm -hmm. peer pressure may be in the body image suppose i am my fragrance is not okay my height already we have told there are n number of classroom situation right. my height is short i am too high my mustache has came so in classroom some stu uh, students they make them uh, any type of comments mm -hmm. you are not good you are back benchers your fragrance is not okay these are the some little bit uh, day to day life that happens in the classroom because it happens uh, in the classroom mm -hmm. which makes them too much depression type exclusion if i do not have the voice and healthy relationship with my classmate then i have to make myself isolation that makes problem for the it will not create the holistic development of a adolescent mm -hmm. always he or she always to exclude her or himself from the that groups that classroom that interaction many times we have seen uh, students they are not also mainstreaming suppose someone question is going on if as a teacher i will not attend entire class in a inclusiveness mm -hmm. okay some student they are sitting back side so we are not attending so that case also that we have to promote how a classroom should be very interesting live and it should be taken in a whole totality mm -hmm. this is also one part of your peer pressure component right. also partiality free judgment suppose i am mm -hmm. a teacher always i will ask some students you are good you are best and uh, your uh, teaching learning process is very nice in that context also student will make themselves a some sort of uh, isolation or this type of things so, so anshul ask about life skills yes yeah? as dr malik said the life skills are psychosocial abilities means these are not physical these mm -hmm. are psychosocial okay manovigyanik hai samajik so these are the abilities which a person can utilize mm -hmm. to even uh, put knowledge attitude awareness into action so these are various life skills so who used to say there are 10 life skills core life skills as uh, projected in the you can say your uh, this screen, one yes. so screen so the first is your self awareness so the because why the peer pressure is there because mm. i am not aware about myself so self awareness include means recognition of self one's own strength one's own growth or you can say preferences beliefs and values so that is also very important so self awareness will help mm -hmm. second is you can say problem solving because sometime when there is a peer pressure so how to deal with that peer pressure how to solve that problem so that means we have to deal constructively saying no or saying yes depending on the situation so we must have the thinking skill mm -hmm. that what is wrong and what is right mm -hmm. and we have that problem solving skills the third is decision making i know this is wrong i know that peer pressure what the my peer is saying about my health about my height about mm -hmm. my weight about my uh, body uh, but i should know that uh, whether he is right or she is right or wrong so i should take a decision no you are not right you are not uh, saying whatever you are saying is you can say correct mm -hmm. so that is another thing and therefore critical analysis is also important what is wrong and what is right then empathy but at the same time peer pressure sometimes the peer uh, we have to uh, have sympathy but not if i am in that situation for example the teacher used to scold the children but if the teacher think that if i am a student 
and if somebody uh, scold me mm -hmm. or if I am a, is a teacher, the principal scold me, what will be my situation? So, putting in that situation and then thinking is very important to develop you can say empathy. Managing emotions, managing stress, managing anxiety is very important and that can be possible only when we recognize our own strength, our own emotions, our you can say uh, our beliefs and our values. So, once we recognize them and we have strength and we know what are our weaknesses, then we can improve our weaknesses and we can strengthen our strength that will help us in managing the emotions. Interpersonal relationship is very important because most of the time we are not able to connect to mm -hmm. the people right. and that connection is very important. So, for students we want that through this program that develop these skills and in teachers also if you see teachers because teachers are very important even parents and teachers for this program um, some of the psychologists used to say that the uh, awareness and developing life skills among parents and teachers is more important because sometime as peer pressure similarly society pressure is there. Mm -hmm. So, the, for teachers the skills are for example, listening okay. most of the teachers do not listen. So, their communication skill is very important when they listen they listen uh, the the student should think that the teacher is listening to me the attentive listening speaking is very important sometimes we speak very harsh mm -hmm. sometimes we speak so low that the students are not able to understand sometimes we question but we question not for the sake of promoting questioning critical thinking right. we question them to make them shut up to you can say not to ask mm. questions so we have to promote that questioning skill among the students and for that the teacher must have the communication both verbal as well as non verbal the another skill which the student should uh, the teacher should have non-judgmental because most of the time we used to give decision it is not we we have to help them to right. take decision what is wrong what is right maybe mm. there are values which may be right for me but not for right for the students right. so the teacher should provide them the pros and cons so that they are able to take a decision so we mm. have as a teacher we have to have non-judgmental right. empathy in the teacher is very important because most of the time the teacher used to use certain words which instead of developing self confidence, self esteem among the students, they used to develop you can say uh, lack of self confidence mm -hmm. or some inferiority complex among right. the children. So, uh, the major focus of these programs is the development of these life skills mm -hmm. and life skills are generic, but actually we have to utilize in the context as he has said the context is peer pressure the context is anxiety, the context is examination pressure, the context the way the teacher used to speak, right. the parental pressure. So, all these how to deal with those pressures. So, we have to develop these generic skills in such a way so that the children are able to become a responsible citizen of the country. Right. And also we have received a, a question ma'am which has been asked by several viewers about the recent child right enforced. So, if you could just highlight on okay. that. <coughs> As you all know, uh, there are various rights for the various age group. So, for adolescent and childs, we have uh, so many rights, but if we show everyone knows about the POXO Act, this is a safeguard for the children mm -hmm. about the um, any physical abuse and the it has some constitutional amendment, mm -hmm. it has some uh, rules and regulations where the person who is abusing or any type of under this uh, umbrella they have to make some penalty and a punishment. Like another uh, so many rights are uh, just enforcing and safe, safeguard our children because this is although we have the society education it so means before for you proceed POXO is something abbreviated term if you could just elaborate it. Yes, protection of child from the sexual Offense. Offense. This is an act, it is 2012, mm -hmm. it has just uh, formulated and also from since it is implementing in the school system as well as in the our out of school mm -hmm. system. Like we have also another uh, rights or safeguard that is known as the Juvenile Justice Act 2015 that is for the uh, juvenile and uh, you as you know so many nowadays so many incidents is happening mm -hmm. before 18 and between ju uh, juvenile age and uh, the whole country and uh, many thinkers, police planners and uh, others responsible authority and institution 
whether they are thinking those who have the committing any type of uh, very heinous crime during uh, uh, juvenile, they will be treated as a uh, adult crime face all this punishment mm -hmm. whatever. But so, we have to make them although we have the some rights for protection of children, the same time also we have to make sensitize, these are the safeguard for you also, these are the from protection. If you do some heinous crime and indulge yourself in the various very bad, acti bad activity mm -hmm. and uh, social stigma, social illness or any type of which is not acceptable right. by socially, so they have to some sort of consequence. So, these are the things we have to. Mm -hmm. like under this POCSO Act, as he, he has very rightly said, that there are various dimensions. For example, even if you are looking at a child, yes. which is not appropriate for the child, looking, showing some right. body parts, touching some body parts, or you can say some other crime, right. mm -hmm. or showing pornographic literature, mm -hmm. or showing the uh, his or her body parts. So, all these things are covered under, under the POCSO Act. And that was done because in uh, 2007, the Ministry of Women and Child Development had conducted a study. And in that study, it comes out that about more than 50 percent of the children mm -hmm. are, are uh, you can say, abused in one way or the other. And that study has also given a revealing, you can say, findings that we generally consider that girls are being abused, but more boys are abused than the girls. So, then this POCSO Act was, uh, you can say, uh, uh, come into existence that there is a need to have safety and security of the children is very, very important. In this direction, there is uh, NCRT has already, already included, you can say, in their textbooks the POC, about the POCSO Act and about e-box, e-POCSO box. Because in e-POCSO box, it is very difficult for the child to come out to and to say some, to someone that I have been abused in that mm -hmm. way or the other right. way. So, uh, there is a uh, link they have given the link, the child can go to the internet, can click on that link, they will just, you can put the questions in that box mm -hmm. and anonymously with name and etcetera, he or she can send and the uh, action can be taken. There are helpline also about uh, how to uh, means for the safety of the children. For example, oh, if one, you see 109, one uh, if you, uh, okay. this is it, it is there on that uh, screen. screen, it is already 1098 child helpline number is there, 104108 the government helplines are also there and different states have government have also their own right. helplines and there are adolescent friendly health services one uh, child has also asked about adolescent friendly yes. health services so all these uh, are there the only thing that many of time we do not have the courage to go and ask, ask right. take the help that mm -hmm. is more important right uh, Ma'am, I was reading few of the articles rel related to our today's topic, so I got to know about a term safety net. If you could just elaborate on that. Uh, you know, safety net is only that the child himself or herself have to find out who can be the trusted person. The trusted person can be parents, the trusted person can be some adult in the family, the trusted person can be, you can say, the teacher, the trusted person can be out of the uh, home. Okay. with some in the community member. So, safety means where he can safely go and talk to that person mm -hmm. and can confide his or her, you can say the uh, whatever suffering or whatever he wants to know. Right. So, that is uh, that's why there is a we used to promote that children must come out with the safety net mm -hmm. and that safety net means whom they can trust. Right. Trust confidentiality is very, very important. Right. So, the safety net mean consisting of all those family members, parents, uh, friends, brothers, sisters, mm -hmm. elders, neighbors or you can say uncle, auntie or anybody in the community, but whom the child has the trust. Right. So, that persons that can be one, that can be two. So, that is the safety where he can safely and securely can say because sometimes you have seen that you are going to a person, but that person itself is a uh, is harmful right. for that uh, for ourselves. So, that is very important that we have to construct that safety net. So, Dr. Malik, would you like to add on this? Uh, yeah, as we have already told, safety net has separate issue also. Suppose for drug abuse or uh, any the other issue, it is different to, from person to person. For uh, suppose uh, we will take the drug abuse. So, so hmm. man, peer pressure is there and friendship also they are just taking. So, in that context, it is different from the other issues. Right. 
Sir, today we very well understood about the adolescent education and why it is important for us to understand it and also if you write child right related to it. And thank you so much to both of you, you for sharing the information. Thank Tomorrow you. we will talk on augmented and virtual reality resources for school education. So further if you have any question or any query related to our any program then you can dial into our toll free number or can drop an email to us or moreover you can send your question on our WhatsApp number which is 807675446. Until then take care, keep watching Kishore Manch.